Greetings from the road. This is Freder Jim. I'm at the Yoder Garage at the Yoder Family Farm. This is unique and I wanted to do a video because uh, I've been hauling since 2006 and specifically since 2008 I've been hauling Model T's and I consider the Model T family my family. I like hauling Model T's more than anything. Next to that Model A's, I'm here with William Dean Yoder who is the Dean of Cool in the Model T family. He's the man, he's the guy to go to, he's the professor. So here's what's unusual about this transport. August 27th, I dropped this off. That's about a month ago. And I dropped it off because the owner had inherited it from his uncle in Las Vegas. I picked it up and he was of the understanding it just needed a carburetor. So he had picked one up and he thought that's all he had to do. And he has rudimentary elementary school, uh, elementary skills. But as I know, that's not the case with Model Ts. So I suggested we take it a little bit further to Dean Yoder, and Dean agreed to work on this. So I'm going to point out the most expensive, as far as labor and parts uh, improvement, which is the Sure Stop Brakes from Birdhaven. This, from what I've observed, if you have average skills in your home and you haven't done it before, home garage, it's going to take you 10 to 12 hours. This is a job. This is a job, and it's not an easy job. So that was the single most labor-intensive thing that was done. Here's a Birdhaven catalog he's given to the new owner. But I'm going to back up here. So this is a 27 Roadster. The paperwork says it's 26, but it's 27. Here's Mr. Dean Yoder. So, Dean, what I want you to explain to folks is... This came to you, you you and Ben, within a day or two, you were out there across the way. What's the first thing you did to this? You drain the water and the gas? I, it's been long enough, I don't remember. Yeah, it's the first thing you did. You drained the water and the gas to check what it was like. I had to install the carburetor. Right, but the first thing you did when it came... But you, you wanted to inspect the water and gas, see what came out. So that's the first thing you did is you drained it. And then you noticed here on the front, and this is no disrespect to the uncle, there was Teflon tape, which is an indication of someone that doesn't really know what they're doing. So you had to redo all of this. Well, the Teflon tape had to be taken out. Teflon right. dissolves in gas. If you look down here closely, you can see where the residue is from, from the gas dripping. So, you put in the carburetor that he had gotten. He redid the fuel line all the way to the tank, right? R right. And then you guys drained the tank, right? Yes. Okay. What did you do on the engine? On the engine, I took the inspection cover off uh, and adjusted the rods. All rods, uh, bottom end looks beautiful. Uh, new Babbitt. But it had been enough miles that the rods needed to have a shim taken out. Problem is, it had the old style laminated shims that you can't peel. So I replaced the shims with peelable ones that are held the, together with glue. Okay. Uh, got the rods adjusted so it doesn't rattle so much anymore. And uh, well, from there, it was other little things. Uh, after one of my test drives, I noticed the, the reason the water pump that was on it wasn't leaking as the shaft was seized solid. So the water pump is in the trunk now. Uh, okay. Took the water pump off. Uh, and you put a new fan belt on. Put a, a different fan belt on because no water pump takes a different size. Right. Uh, Did you do any new clamps there that I well, see? Well, on the other side, I, we put a, a more modern clamp on the, on the hoses uh, to prevent it from leaking. Anything else you want to point out on this side? One uh, manifold clamp uh, was uh, only held in by a couple threads and seemed to strip out. So I put an earlier style stud in, which goes in much deeper and, and catches more of the threads. Okay, so let's, let's close that doghouse cover and we'll raise the other one. Anything of well, I, anything I worthy to note on the front that you noticed? One of the first things I did was rebuild all the coils in it too because it, they all leak. But, but on the front end, we're looking at the front right end. On the is front there... end, 
that needs to be replaced. That's a reproduction uh, uh, splice shield, and it's not bolted on like it's supposed to. Right. So for not just for aesthetics and 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 to make it accurate, it needs a new one to make well, it to make that it usable. One might be usable, right. but you have to pull a radiator right. off on a twenty six seven to okay. to do it right. And I didn't. Like so let's, that it's got ball. these beautiful lenses on it, purple lenses. Let's raise this side. So you had to do all the coils and you did yeah. them in house. Yeah. Dean, Dean rebuilt all this co all the coils here, which not a lot of people would do. So do you want to lift the cover or not on the coil box? No, only we'll the cover. All right. it. So I did that. Anything here on the electrical or was that all well, okay? Electrical is pretty much okay. All right. Uh, yeah, well, I guess I would say it has undersized cables for the battery and the starter, which means the starter turns over slow. Okay. Uh, to make the starter turn over faster, it would have to have original battery cables put in, but I don't happen to have those. So that's something he should probably take care of. Yeah. But he could it, do that himself. It, 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 yeah, it's an easy do. I mean, okay. uh, uh, now you, you, three five-eighths inch nuts. And, and, which uh, fender here was fitted wrong? Was that the passenger side? Well, no, the right, right, right. The right rear was not fitted right, so well, you had to well, refit it. It wasn't even hooked up to the running board. It oh, jeez. A couple bolts holding it. So All right. We've got bolts holding it and the splice shaper and the running board, which none of those were there. Uh, now inside with the addition of the replacement pedal that has the extension for the sure stop brakes do we have to do anything in here well it, everything had to come out so right. it could, could be put in there but nothing else got replaced no nothing else okay it, the, the floor mat got thrown away because it was in too many pieces now in your opinion the windshield's okay the interior's fitted pretty good i didn't look to see if it had safety glass i should have What do you think about that? I think it's got safety glass. Okay. What do you think of the top? It's got a good fit. Oh, the top is a nice top. But we haven't tried to put it down. Dean's no. going to double check the safety glass. Sometimes the safety yeah, glass... safety glass. Okay, which is good. Way. Which is good. And show them, unless it's too much, how the guy beefed the hell out of this trunk. <laughs> well... It takes two arms to lift, folks. The trunk has been reinforced with about a ton of metal. Look at this shit. <laughs> You don't have to worry about that falling open. Three rods. Uh, and I'm not sure whether this piece is solid or what, but there's a lot of weight right back So here. in the back, we've got some chains. Yeah, the original some spare water, parts. water pump and can, floor chalk. <laughs> so, folks, here's what Dean Yoder's about. Here's what I'm about. Folks who get their first Model T, usually they're disappointed. And a fair amount of them are like, screw this, I'm not gonna have a Model T. Because they have an unpleasant experience. So Dean Yoder has always been about the family. He's always been about the hobby. And he's willing, if he's available, and he's up to it, to get a new T owner on the road. And his philosophy is the same as mine. When you get a T, you need to get it running right. And just because somebody tells you something, doesn't matter. It is what it is, and you don't know what it is until you get someone to evaluate it like Dean William Yoder, who's qualified. Because at the end of the day, and this is what I love, fix daily. Did you notice that? Yeah, I noticed the license was. So Dean and I both don't want the new owner to have to be fixing this daily. We want him to get in this. We want him to have a pleasant experience. Other than the unforeseen, we want him to be able to drive down the road. So in the course of doing this, this seems to be a good runner. Dean's taken it on several test drives. So it's been here about a month. So in the interim, I went and picked up a car in Iowa, dropped it off in Connecticut, picked up a car in uh, New Hampshire or uh, Massachusetts, brought it back to Illinois, and I was back here, hung around. So this is the first time I've dropped a vehicle off, had it repaired, brought it to the new owner. Dean's going to give him driving lessons today. But this is unusual. This isn't going to happen with every car I pick up. And Dean Yoder isn't always going to be available. But here's the point. Make your first Model T one that you're going to keep. So if you're going to make a commitment, you're going to buy a Model T, you're going to need to bring it to somebody that's qualified to let you know the condition.
And then they're going to need to get it running safely for you on the road. Because the last thing that you and I want to see, Dean, is... Exactly. Not only that, but I didn't even think of that. We want somebody in these cars who's going to pass it along to their next generation. At the end of the day, forget the clubs, forget the organizations, forget the third party. It's a Model T family that we're talking about. It's the family that we both try to take and do good deeds for. And this is a good deed. Dean Yoder didn't have to do this. God knows he's got enough on his plate. He's leaving in a few days for Hershey Swap Meet. He was gracious enough to fit this gentleman in on my recommendation. And at the end of the day, we're loading up, taking it. This afternoon, he'll be driving a T, and he'll be able to drive the next time he gets in. This is Freighter Jim from the Yoder Garage on Yoder Farm. Much thanks to Dean William Yoder. Folks, this is the greatest guy living in the hobby. He gives back more than he'll ever get from the Model T family. If you see him on a tour, if you see him at Hershey Swap Meet, walk up and shake his hand. This is the guy that lives the way people lived 100 years ago and don't live today. Everybody out there, drive safe, arrive alive. This is Freighter Jim, starting off Monday the right way.